Yeah, he's, he's a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just wondering how much of it you stuck to the script as opposed to improvising dialogue. And I don't remember. I do not remember. I could not tell you. I'm sure a lot of it's the script. It's probably more the script than anything, but... Well, it's know. more you than anything. It's for sure me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Any actor who tells you something else is just full of shit. It's you. you know? uh, and you just turn little knobs and stuff. Yeah. Um, Sorry for cutting you off. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. Um, so when you talk to There's more, there's more, there's more. You know, like talking to him even now, you know, um, this doesn't go into like the alternatives to pills, which I think is a huge topic. Like marijuana is been vilified in this country. And if you're a federal agent in this country, like a Marine, and we probably, Lionsgate's probably like, yo, don't get into this, shut the fuck up. But, <laughs> but when, I, when I start to talk to these people, they're like, um, you know, there's something that's never been explored. When I come home, I have to give them my gun, and that's awkward. That's, that's like being, like just get come up, stand up here and be naked. That's what it feels like. Give me your rifle, or you're a Marine. You've just been told all through your whole, this is your life, and now they take it from you, and now you're naked in front of the world. And all you have to get away from that awkward feeling is alcohol. Because if they catch you with anything other than alcohol in your system, they take your career from you. So, I mean, like, not just that, they are held to different standards in terms of like, you get caught cheating on your woman, for instance. You know, in some situations, it'd just be a divorce and your career ain't attached to that. Marines is different code of ethics and it, it's a federal crime, you know? So the MPs that roll and check these guys, they, they're held to a different, uh, a different kind of standard when they come home. So they're drinking, drinking I know is a fucking depressant. It'll ruin you. And these dudes, only, that's the only outlet. Because we're still in this 50s Rockwell America uh, thinking about drugs and, and drug culture. And so I think as drug culture, the, the, the knowledge of it expands, I think it'll expand for the military too. And maybe you'll have less, uh, you know, the rates will change. Uh, because right now, all, all you have is depressants to turn to. There's nothing to alleviate that kind of weird itching tension. What they come home with is an, an extreme observational disorder. They can't even listen to you because like you could ask this man, dudes who work in this field, right? They, they just scanning all the time, right? So they gotta make sure, you know, their back is against the wall so they can't stand right there. They got, it's just a fucked way to live. You're constantly like scanning shit and checking people's MO so you can't even really enjoy life. And that only goes away for some of these people, my father would tell you, if you can smoke some weed and relax. It, it sounds funny and that's something we gotta deal with. Because it's not a funny thing. It's actually, it's, it's actually like, it, it might be a solution. We've never, t we've never tried. And, and uh, there's no scientist that, that can tell you that, that it's a bad thing. So I, I, I just ask why not? And the why not would be the boogeyman, which is drugs, which is something that I'm not the spokesman for and I can't fight this, you know, but uh, that's what's not in this movie. That would have distracted from what this movie has the power to do, I think. But yeah, that's a different conversation. Hey, Shia. I hey. Just, uh, good movie. Great movie. Thanks, I man. Say I'm a huge fan. Thanks, uh, man. Fools is still one of my favorite movies. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Earlier, um, when you were talking about Gary Oldman, you said that he's a great technical actor, and yeah. you're not. What does that mean? Well, uh, 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 well he's, he's, um, he's classically trained, dog. He went to the Royal Academy. <laughs> You know, he's he's uh, been he's 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 studied. I'm like learn on the fly. I learned at yard sales. He learned at the fucking thing. You know, <laughs> in front of people's like people like this and worked on voice and like technical. I've never done any of that, and that's stuff that I'm like playing catch up on. You know, and I, I'm in awe of people that you know. Kate Blanchett is not Joaquin Phoenix. They're different entities. <laughs> one is about feel. One is a little bit of feel and also strategy. There's other people that have no strategy. They just come in and go, wah. Uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out where I'm at. Okay, so first of all, I just want to say, man, um. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>
Sometimes I, I, you know, I, I mean, I'll tell you my own thing about this. Sometimes this feels preachy. Sometimes it feels a little like schmaltzy. I get nervous about that. I get nervous about too many man downs at the end, you know, shit like that. <laughs> that shit that I go home with and go, mm, I don't know. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't really have like a question about the movie. I mean, I thought it was great, cool. and at the end, it like blew my mind. Bomb. But uh, I really just have a comment for you, and I was like thinking throughout the whole movie that I was like such a big fan of your movies like growing up Boom. like holes disturbia then like to see you in transformers mm -hmm. and then like i was like fury was a great movie and then it, like i was like i you know i missed seeing you in like movies so yeah, yeah. i just wanted to let you know that you know you're a great actor good shit dude thank you <laughs> that lion's gate what's up let me get a job <laughs> We also both really enjoyed your freestyle with Sway. Oh, yeah. Bars, 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 bars. All right, yes. Um, awesome, awesome. Um, how long did it take you to fully get into character? Like, was it a really hard process? No, nah, he found me in character. That's what I mean. Like, I was in a weird spot, you know? Okay. Yeah, he, he showed up at my door and was like, ooh, there you are. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about, bro? Get out of the house. <laughs> I got a question. Um, I know there's probably a lot of aspiring like filmmakers in this room. A lot of us are studying film at Columbia here in Chicago. Dope. Hats off. And um, I would say like if there was like if you had to start over tomorrow. Yeah. Like what would be your first step like to try and break into the industry as an aspiring actor, producer, director, something My like that? Like, what would what would you what would you give advice to someone like that? Or if it, if you were in that position, you had to start all over again. Yeah. If I was going to start all over again, I would just start reading plays and filming them. I did this one thing called Orphans. I got fired from this play in New York. Mm -hmm. But the coolest thing to come out of it was I did this one take one time into this into some bullshit camera and put it up on YouTube and was looking at it like, wow, you memorized the whole play. And I never thought I would be able to because I've never been like, this is what I ad lib a lot. Since even Steven's days, I make up shit. I just, I come in, I read a line, I'll be like, yeah, all right, okay, okay. But, and then I'll then I, like, do my own thing, you know? That's why the freestyle went well, because you sort of, it's the same, comes from the same place. You sort of like, you know, it's jazz, yeah? It's like soloing, kind of. Yeah. And so I, I think uh, I would probably just get plays and read them into the camera, like, like, um, like all year long. I would just do like three, four plays a year and just throw it into the camera and just set up a, a channel and then go to auditions. I mean, I got my agent in the yellow pages. I have no internet. You know, and I, and I just took the bus there. It was like, hey, man, I want to be an agent. I mean, I want to be an actor. And he was like, cool. And it, it was really just that simple. It takes a little bit of gusto, that step, and then, you know, like a, like a belief in yourself, which comes from, like, putting that work in. You know, I didn't have that when I came in. That's probably why I was insecure. But I, if I was going to start over, plays into a camera. Cool. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, I love the movie, it was really great. I've loved you since I was like eight years old. Wow. I'm 19 now, wow. so it's been a while. Since <laughs> 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 I have a question. Do you have any like future projects? Because I'd love yeah. to see you in more movies. Yeah, yeah, there's stuff coming. Yep. You briefly touched on the topic of infidelity and that honesty present in the film. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, like, as when you were reading the script initially, what were your initial reactions to that? Because I feel like that's a trope with women in war movies. Yeah. And they're not yeah. faithful. So yeah. I was wondering how that was complement you know, the characters, the way things go. I mean, I, I thought, you know, it was a trope too. And then you go and you, 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 you it's not, it's not, it's not, it's what the fuck, that's what's going on. Like on a crazy scale. You can ask anybody who knows any Marine, she's nodding. It's, it's rampant. In the military, it's rampant. And it's with friends of friends of friends, it's rampant. Because it's a small world, military world. They're like in their own cities. It's like military towns. They're in their own bubble. That's why things like this pop up and dudes get elected and they win. You go, who? Who, who voted? And you're walking through the airport and you're like, was it you? <laughs> you know, and you have that weird feeling. It's because there's these little isolated pockets. And some of them are military towns where it gets very tricky with this, uh, the love deal in the, in the military. And Marines especially. Marines more than any other branch. The Marines, specifically. Yeah, I just want to say I 
I haven't been to a movie like this that I've been mind fucked since like. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is gonna be like the movie that everyone's like, fuck, don't we spoil it, don't tell us what's gonna cool. happen. Yeah. And yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. You know, it's weird. The reason I, I wanted to do this and sh show people was because when I was in a weird spot and the media liked to like <clears throat> fillet me for anything, I could do anything, they were just like, fuck that guy. And so <laughs> I, I showed this movie in Venice and it was around the time when people were like, fuck that guy. And it was cool to hate me, hate on me. So people didn't even watch the movie. They would dip out. I watched them leave, like, and and, and then we just go home and go. Bah! And then when we came home with like a zero rotten tomato score, Lionsgate was like, I don't know if we can put this out, my guy. And I was like, oh, bro. let me just show some people. So that's what this is. So that's you know this is like kind of awesome to hear you say that for a bunch of reasons and with people in the room. It's dope. Not to pressure people to saying his dope, <laughs> but, but, and I probably shouldn't have said that, but that's just telling me, that's where I'm at right now. Yes? Now, they do have one question about the whole, you know, post-apocalyptic uh, aspect of yeah. it. What really influenced that? Because when, when the movie first started, I saw it as, you know, you went out to war, you came back, and then, you know, the Middle East nuked the shit out of us, and yeah. just trying to survive. Yeah. But then, as it went on, it really kind of set in, I'm like, holy shit, this is all on his head. Like, yeah. what was that? That's Adam. That's all Adam. Yeah, because the guy who wrote it, the guy who wrote it, who's twisted, I told you, was homeless when he wrote it. He wrote this in the street. Mm -hmm. You go into Starbucks, you buy a couple pages. He, he was living in the street when he wrote it. So he was living in sort of his own little post-apocalyptic world. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, we all had this guy in us. All the guys who showed up to make it, even the girls, had Gabriel in us, and he was m more so than anyone. W this is his life story, you know, aside from the Marine stuff. I mean, he was just like a petty criminal who was messing up and doing drugs, but this post-apocalyptic thing with the kids, all his story. Yeah. One more and then I'll dip, yeah. Well, I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed the movie. Thank you. Um, Yeah, <laughs> way back. That movie had me in tears. I'm back there like you were just a Cool. <laughs> Great job, my little people. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. One more. Okay, let me. One question, and I'll dip. Yeah. Um. And you don't have to clap when I get out. That'd be weird. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> your experience with Dito and a guy to recognize in your face. Yeah. Coming out of like holes and stuff like that. Yeah. We've been talking about. How was it working with him now? Was it just as like explosive? Was it? Yeah, well, back then I was 18 when I met Ditto. Yeah. And Robert Downey Jr. was walking around. So I was very like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause I was like, I got on through pop culture. I didn't get on like critical. I wasn't like Eddie Redmayne, just like, <laughs> that's not how I got on. <laughs> I got on like Dumb and Dumber or Constantine Rowley, you know what I mean? Yeah. So my come up was different. So you get around some of these people who are like, and you're just like, whoa, fuck. You get around Robert Downey Jr. and you see Chaplin the night before and you're like, <laughs> you just feel like nothing, you know? So I was very like timid, super timid, like really small. Um, and then I did it, you know, I, then I worked for a while. And then the next time I saw Ditto, I was like a fully formed person. Yeah. And so I was ready to go to work when I saw Ditto this time. And it wasn't, it was it's such a different deal. We wrestled this time. It was like, it was <laughs> contentious. I needed somebody to bounce off of when I, when I would like get tired or something like that. We had these space heaters set up. This gets super weird. But I, I'll get these. I'll get these space heaters set up because, like, that whole last scene when I'm down with the kid and, and mm -hmm. under the thing, it's like a lot of heart rate and sweat and all this. And every time the woman would run in and squirt me with the thing, I'd be like, "Yo, that just killed my vibe." Like, I, I can't be thinking bang bang, and you're coming in with this little pink thing. <laughs> like it just, I'm gone. Now I need to go wait for a little bit and go do my thing for a minute. Maybe call my. I gotta do something. So then I'm, I would get to these space heaters and I would just go like this and I have my he headphones in and I have all my gear on. And I was just like for 20 minutes with space heaters like this, just jumping into space heaters. And Ditto would come over and he would whisper things to me. 
and that was our setup and that that was new we didn't have that like I, I never asked for anything the first time like I just sort of showed up and was like yes sir no sir this time was like yo I know it works this is what's gonna this it, you just start like being more open when when, when you get another go run with a guy who you feel like loves you yeah. you can start saying yo this is actually my favorite flavor of ice cream, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not trying to be your, your, your guy right now. I actually fucking love chocolate. Let's roll with chocolate right now. You know what I mean? It's like that. Whereas, like, you can't, when you're trying to impress somebody on a human thing, acting is, there's no rules to it. Sometimes you gotta do things that you don't, that aren't, like, civilized, you know? Pfft, crazy things, you know? And so you gotta, you gotta really like know the person you're doing this in front of. So when you love him and you get here, this is the only way I could have done this. If I was with like a, a director who I, who I respected and was scared of, mm -hmm. I couldn't do this. Like my worst shit is with all the guys that I looked up to. Oliver mm -hmm. Stone, Spielberg. I'm the worst. Cause I'm walking around like, yes sir, okay. Oh my God, it's fucking you, man. Oh shit. <laughs> you know, and I'm the worst. When I get around dudes that I feel like, oh, oh you're my guy. Then I can, then, then, then you, I, I, I get better for me. Yeah, that's just some stuff I found. Anyway, I talked too long. Thank you for coming. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, uh, uh, and please, again, you know, if you can. All right, good night. <laughs>